who are developing coaching, mentoring um, job seekers so that they're best prepared to find jobs and seek re-employment. But we also work with employers and bring open positions to that, and we try to match them up as best we can. Um, it's, it's a working function that uh, bodes well for both parties. Uh, what we try to do is uh, expedite the re-employment process for everyone. And by bringing the employer into the, onto the table with the job seeker, we try to match those parties together and uh, make it a win-win scenario. So you've got a dual customer model where you're kind of working with both the people who have jobs, the employers, and the people who are looking for jobs, the job seekers. Absolutely. And our staff is trained as such. We have people who are specifically trained and work with each facet of that operation. Um, and we work together sort of as a working collaborative so that we can, again, bring about the best possible solution, which is filling jobs in the industries, you know, manufacturing, health, science, medical, we work with a STEM program, uh, but also job seekers and, and helping them get re-employed. And it's not just events like this, there's also a lot going on at the centers themselves. Oh, absolutely. Every day at the, at the, uh, at the career centers, we have career counselors who are working with job seekers. We do workshops, we do uh, seminars, we do recruitment sessions with employers. Um, and this is a function that we do on a daily basis. And really what we're trying to do is bring about a, a free service to all of our constituents and, and providing them with these services on a daily basis. Uh, and it, it's, it's proven to be successful. So you don't have to pay to go to a career center. It's, it's something that's it's a free service. It's it's covered. A absolutely, including this. This is uh, you know it's, it's it basically it's for free for everybody. Um, they're coming in. Uh, we're working with them. We coach them in terms of coming to the job fair, how to best work a job fair, uh, and that's part of our our expertise and in, in partnering that with the job seeker. And if somebody's watching at home or listening at home and they'd like to connect with with the career center, what's the best way to do so? Well, you can do it one of two ways. You can go on the internet, and we're at Workforce Central, MA. Uh, dot org, or you can call one of the uh, one of the offices. And we, again, we're local, there's 33 offices across the state, but here on a regional basis, it's uh, Worcester, Milford, and Southbridge. You can find us on the internet, uh, whether it be mass.gov or the city website. Uh, but again, also you can give us a call. Great. Well, thanks for taking some time to talk to us, Jonathan. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. I'm here with Jill from Tri-State Trucking. How are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. So Jill is one of our employer partners here at the job fair, and uh, we asked to take a couple seconds with her to uh, talk about her experience so far. So Jill, is this the first time Tri-State Trucking's um, participated in the job fair? No, actually we were here last year as well. And uh, did you have a good time? Were you able to make some connections and, some, and have any luck with some job seekers? Sure. We come to this fair um, prepared to actually hire people. And so we're always looking for diesel mechanics to fix trucks. And so we hired a few de diesel mechanics last year and actually a few um, people to work our counters. Oh, that's great. That's great. We love to hear success stories like that. Um, so also, um, I've heard you guys are have a, a different approach to these job fairs. If people give you a resume, you have a, a unique approach to... Fo to <laughs> following up with that, don't you? Yes, I think people's time is valuable and at Tri-State we understand that because of the business we're in. We fix trucks. They need to be fixed and on the roads. So when people are looking for jobs at our company, we think the right thing to do is to get back to them. So anyone that leaves us a resume or applies online, we get back to them within a 30-day period, one way or the other. And if their resume is great looking for us but we don't have a position, we'll also keep that for six months. That's great. It really is great. Um, and so this year, what are you guys looking for? What kind of positions are you looking to fill? Diesel mechanics as always. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, trucks break down on the road, and we're always, always looking for diesel mechanics. Everything has changed the way that you actually fix a truck. But we've built our company really on customer service. So we also have um, openings, entry-level openings in the parts department, so it's a counter and also in our service department. So the type of thing that you would be doing is either dealing with the mechanics in the back who are fixing trucks, you can be dealing with one-on-one -on -one customers or actually corporations who need their trucks fixed. Great, great. Yeah, I can tell that customer service is important to you guys. We're getting back to the people with the resumes and just even talking with you seem to really care about people. Um, so do you have any advice for today's job seekers that are out here or future job seekers if you come to another job fair? Yeah, I mean, what we always do, too, for ourselves, we want to improve this. So I would think next year when we attend this, we want to do our homework to actually reach out to people to tell them what they need so when they come here, their resume is ready. So ideally, what we're looking for is someone to drop their resume off today, not go online. Mm -hmm. It's the ideal situation for us is to come with a resume with your questions and then talk to us for a few minutes about what you're good at. 
and give that face-to-face -face connection there. That's exactly it. You don't have to be in the trucking industry. Mm -hmm. We know trucks. That's what we know. We know everything about them, sales, service, and parts. If you don't have that background, we can teach you everything you need to know. So there's some training involved there. Then. Yes. And, and uh, I know you said you, you like that person-to-person -person connection there, but if, if there are people at home that um, you know, have missed the, the job fair and aren't able to connect to the person, is there another way? Are they able to go online or call? Like, What would be the next steps to connecting with Tri-State? Yep. We have a website that's out there right now, tristatetruckcenter.com. We're in the process of rebuilding that, so it will look different probably in the next month. Yeah, all right. um, but people can put their resumes there. You can fill out a job application if you don't have a resume. And again, we pride ourselves on getting back to people. So we will get back to anyone that applies. That's great. Well, I thank you for taking a couple minutes. I'll let you get back in there because I know there's a big crowd at your table. So right. thanks again and uh, have a great afternoon. Okay, well, Sean, great job with that interview. And, uh, it's such a such a great event. I mean, to have oh, that yeah. many Every employers, yeah. um, job seekers. One of the things that they report is it's so hard to get face to face and actually talk to a representative of a company. A lot of applications now done online, uh, and so it's really kind of taken the person to person element out of it. And it's so frustrating for them not to get some solid feedback. So to have someone like Tri State uh, that they can talk to and, and share the resume with. Now I do. I think it's time for. We do our mailbag yeah. uh, thing. I think we need we need like Is an there intro. an intro to that? Mailbag. That's Something pretty like good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to record that. We're gonna have to. CD. Yeah, we're gonna have to put that. We'll put some special graphics to it and all that. Make it fancy. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so so you did have a uh, a follow up letter about about following up from a yeah yeah. So we um, again, if 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 folks at home have any questions for us, um, they can email us at the working lunch uh, at wcuw.org, um, and we get emails from time to time. And I, I picked one out that I thought would kind of go with the theme of the show. It's from Bill in Worcester, and he writes, "I just went to a job fair earlier this week, and it was great. I met some employers uh, that I think I made a good connection with." My question is now what? Do I call them? Email? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an interesting question. Yeah. Right? Like what, I what actually, I'm happy because I actually think I know the guy that wrote this. I, uh, <laughs> pretty good friends with, uh, with, I think the, with, I think, the bill in question here. So that's pretty funny. So I went to John McCarthy, who is the business services rep at the Career Center, to mm -hmm. ask him about what you would do for a follow-up after a, um, after a job, a job fair. fair. And he said most recruiters will give you specific directions when you meet them. But if they don't, there's a couple steps that you can you can kind of you can use to move forward. So this is just a general guide. If they if someone gives you specific instructions, obviously that's what you should you should be on the listen for during your during your uh, time with them at the job fair. Yeah, and he also said it was important to note that going forward, when you go to a job fair, you should always ask, "How would hey, you like me to follow up?" That's a question you should start asking. Great question. But if you haven't, um, he said to wait at least a week or two. To mm -hmm. give them some time. He says, you know, they've been out of the office for a full day. They're going to have a full email inbox. They're going to need to catch they're up. They're going to have a pile of work. Yeah, they're going to have to take some time to kind of decompress from that. So wait a week or two. He said um, the best way to get back is an email. Because, again, they had the recruiter met a, a bunch of job seekers. So if they get a whole inundated with a whole bunch of uh, calls, they might not get back to you. So mm -hmm. an email is something that's going to sit in their, e their inbox, and then when they go down the list, they'll get to you, and they'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. He said to think of the email as a thank you note after a job interview. Have you ever done one of those? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, So sure. basically you really want to be excited about the, the job, the position, the company, um, kind of reiterate anything. You're that, fit for it. Exactly. Kind of. And then also. And your interest, yeah. Yeah, yep. And then you also want to note anything that might have made you stand out so that it will jog their memory. Oh, okay. Like, so those are like, well, I, you know, we that talk, I'm kind we of talk to you. Hey, I was the guy in the yellow tie. Uh, well, like, what, some, like if you had like, like a conversation, hey, you might like, remember, hey, hey, we had chatted about yeah, about that. Chat. I, I used to work at this position, or I we talked about the Celtics game the night before, the weather, anything that you you remember that might with, yeah. might be able. We to probably don't want to right. force it too much. Right. If, it <laughs> if it's not there, then I was I was the guy that talked to you about the job. Yeah. So I hope that'll happen. like a thousand other people, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I came by your table and talked to you that day. <laughs> like, be like, I'm the guy with the like, thing, yeah, right? Yeah, I was, I was the guy wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, so Bill, I hope that answers your question. If it's your friend, maybe you can tell him that in person, too, unless no. he's not watching. <laughs> but, uh, thanks again, yeah, Bill. Thanks and again, it. if folks ha at home have a question, please feel free to email us. It's theworkinglunch at wcuw.org. 
Uh, and you know we've got we've got so much going on these days. We've got these events that we're trying to get out and covering as part of and bring to the show. We're also, um, you know, as word gets out about the the popularity of the show and about uh, what we've got going on, we've had some some requests to come in and talk about you know things that that are out there for the community that are related. One issue um, that uh, that's out there is uh, tax. It's tax season. Timely, right? It's timely. Yeah, it's tax season coming up, and there is. A uh, program out there to help people uh, prepare their taxes uh, if they if they if they need some help for free. So I want I wanted to just play a quick interview with um, that uh, that I was able to uh, to do with Miss Rita Crimin. She works over at the United Way. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and play that? We're talking with Miss Rita Crimin, the uh, volunteer coordinator for the Worcester Earned Income Tax Credit Coalition. Uh, and can you tell us a little bit about the volunteer? Uh, tax assistance program that you have. Great. Um, we have been in existence since 2003, so this is our 10th anniversary of helping low and moderate income families. Uh, we get free tax preparation in the city of Worcester and also to help them uh, get eligibility for some of the different tax credits that are available, such as the earned income tax credit. Great. Now, who's eligible for assistance with this program? Uh, there are people that make uh, approximately $50,000 a year or less are eligible for free tax preparation at our four VITA sites in the city of Worcester. Okay. <clears throat> and which uh, those sites are, and I have a, a list here, mm -hmm. uh, those sites would be the Worcester Community Action Council. Correct. Uh, uh, Maine South Community Development Corporation on Main Street near yeah. Clark University. Uh, Plumley Village over on Laurel Street in Worcester, off Summer Street. And then Worcester State University in the Sullivan Academic Building in Worcester. Great. I know that you have support from different uh, partners to help you uh, with this tax preparation. That is correct. Um, we, as I said, we've been in existence for 10 years, and uh, we partner with a number of businesses and nonprofit organizations and colleges. So the three colleges that we work with are Assumption College, and those students are at Plumley Village. We work with Worcester State University, and obviously those students are at Worcester State. And then we also work with Quinsigaman College, and they do tax preparation at Maine South CDC. Then we have a wonderful relationship with Unum. Uh, they have been with us now for a good six years, I'm going to say, and they do tax preparation for us at Worcester Community Action Council. And All Com Credit have been wonderful friends of ours. They're a small credit union on Park Avenue, and they do tax preparation, and they also do credit counseling at Plumley Village. Super. So how do folks get involved, then? Should they, should they call those locations or look? That would really be the best thing to do, Jeff. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we are going to be abbreviating our hours um, because obviously everybody's gotten their taxes done already and they have their refunds, hopefully. So it would be best to call either Maine South CDC, Plumley Village, Worcester Community Action Council, or Worcester State University. And you can access all that information by getting on the United Way of Central Massachusetts website, which is www unitedwaycm.org and scroll to EITC, which stands for Earned Income Tax Credit, and you'll have, have find all the phone numbers there. Well, certainly it sounds like a, <clears throat> a wonderful uh, program and providing a great service to, to the community, Thank and I, I appreciate your time to, to come on and, and tell us about it today. Thank you again, Ms. Crimin. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Take care. Thank you. Okay, so uh, so again, that's that's it's neat that uh, those resources are out there in the community that people can take advantage of. Um, wanted to kind of switch gears a bit here. We got a few minutes before we have to wrap up. It's it's amazing to me how fast an hour goes by. Just quick on air here, just zooms by. Um, did want to congratulate one of our colleagues, Amy Mosher, uh, over at Workforce Central. Uh, what Amy was, did? Well, she that? was she was uh, she was named as the Telegram and Gazette. Vision's Young Leader Award winner. Oh, wow. And so recognized for her efforts. She's quite a, a change agent. Um, she has, uh, uh, she's spearheading our efforts around, uh, at the Career Center, around uh, new business development and helping people start Some their own business. new workshops and stuff too, right? New workshops, yes, around, you know, again, around helping people 
who have an idea and how to take that to fruition to start their own business, how to access resources and, and support for that. So we want to congratulate her for, for nice her job, efforts, Amy, as well as all the all the folks over at the Career Center again with their with their um, amazing uh, job fair that they had. A lot of good work being done over there. Um, also, want to want to mention yesterday we had our youth jobs fair uh, in partnership with Worcester, Worcester State, State University and the folks at Worcester State. Uh, University did a great job of hosting that event and really, really uh, engaging students, uh, both high school aged and uh, mostly co- uh, high school junior seniors, and then also um, uh, college students. It was great to see we had, you know, uh, a few hundred students come by and, and talk with. We had over 40 organizations that were uh, involved with that as well. So that was a great opportunity yeah. to talk about summer jobs. There were a couple uh, of workshops too. There were a couple of workshops there. One on social, using social media in your job search, and, and getting word out about uh, if you have a business too. And then one on people skills people and networking. People skills and networking. Yeah. So it was great. It was uh, a great opportunity. Like I said, um, you know, youth, youth employment is obviously a big thing. Summer jobs are obviously a big thing. We talk about Frank. I uh, was kind of bringing it back to the beginning of the show. Around the public support for those programs is very limited. Um, even even in good years, even in times of um, you know good public uh, support for that, we're still. So we just uh, really dropped in the bucket of the number of young people that want to be out there working in the summer. And so this was an opportunity to really connect them with a lot of summer jobs. A lot of organizations there, the YMCA, the Boys Club, uh, uh, the YWCA, that, that had summer jobs. You know, their summer camps are hiring now. So getting them in touch with, uh, with suitable candidates is a real win-win for that. So I uh, want to thank them. I think well, Bob, Bob's giving us the axe. He's giving us the axe. So it's about time for us to sign off. I do want to thank... Uh, Thank Bob uh, and, and the folks at Cable Services He's again for their help. Jesse. Uh, we put this all together. Jesse and, and his work. Frank. And coming in. <laughs> he's got a whole, we've got a whole list there today. Four. Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more.